there, it's Dr. Clay here with another episode of the Dr. Clay Show. The show that tells you like it is, gives you accurate and unbiased information that helps you look and feel your best. Now, as you can probably tell, it's been a couple of days since I've done an episode, and I apologize for that. Typically, it's going to be a daily show. Nonetheless, I've been so busy finishing up the book that I told you about last week that I'm going to actually give away for free. I know it's probably stupid, but nonetheless, what I want to do. So, in finishing that up, I have been asking for questions uh, from friends, colleagues, um, people like yourself, asking questions so that I can gather a few frequently asked questions to put in the book. Make sure that I tie everything together. So, in doing that, I found that there is one question that is unanimously the most commonly or frequently asked question. I want to go ahead and answer it right here for you today. And that question is, when it comes to dieting for losing fat, is it calories that matter most? That's actually a very good question. It's something that I just, I felt like I had to cover now because I want to dispel this myth once and for all. The myth will not die and it's confusing a lot of people. So here's the scoop. It is not just calories that count. Now, calories do count, but saying that it's simply calories in versus calories out is not true. That's an oversimplification. For example, you could say that, well, to be able to save more money, you just have to make more money. Then you can save more money. Well, that's not necessarily the case. It depends on how much you spend, what your budget is, what or your house payment is, or your rent, or your car payment, and so on. So you see, just as a blanket statement saying people that make more have more in savings, that's wrong. So it's the same with calories. All calories are not created equal. Let me let you in on something. Do you know how calories are measured and how scientists determine how many calories are in a food? They light the food on fire, basically they burn it, in a laboratory setting and they measure how much heat is given off and that's how many calories it has. Well, I'm here to tell you my friend, in case you don't know, your body treats food differently than a Bunsen burner does. <laughs> your body treats protein, for example, way differently than it does carbohydrates and differently than fat and alcohol, which is actually another macronutrient that you shouldn't be consuming too much of, but nonetheless. When your body eats protein, that is primarily used to build things with, whereas carbohydrates are primarily used for energy. So your body doesn't treat those two equally. So just to say that it's simply calories is silly. Another example is how often you eat. For example, let's say that you and your best friend both eat 2,000 calories but you're smart and you divide yours across five different meals. So you consume 400 calories, breakfast, a snack, lunch, snack, and then dinner. So across five different meals or small meals, you have 400 calories. Your friend, on the other hand, skips breakfast, eats lunch, a thousand calorie lunch, then has a thousand calories at dinner. I guarantee you, your physique, all other things being equal, your physique will be way better than your best friend's. It's simply because your best friend will be feeding themselves too much at one time, but then going too long in between meals. So feeding your body small frequent meals and the types of food that you consume makes a huge difference. And I would even go so far as to say, and I've got a lot of uh, work or experience under my belt, not only doing it myself, but helping others doing this. So it's not just a, an off the cuff guess, but in my, the 17, 18, going on 19 years of experience now, I would say that it matters even more actually what type of calories you consume and exactly when you consume them. So I hope that makes sense and that that clarifies and dispels once and for all that it's simply calories in versus calories out. Now, of course, in the book, I cover this in great detail along with a, a lot more things. So I do hope you'll grab your copy. Obviously, it's free. There's no strings attached, so you should. And I'll let you know next week when it's available. It should be available next Monday. But I will keep you posted right here at the Dr. Clay Show. Uh, but I have a special um, 
special sort of announcement or it's in a way it's a favor it's a way for me to help you as I said the book is uh, coming out in early next week and I'm, I'm going to be this type of person I am I'm going to be editing that thing until the last minute trying to improve it up until go time so as I said I'm still gathering some questions I want to hear what people want to know the answer to basically I'm writing the book for you not for me I already know the stuff so it's, it's not my book it's for you guys. So the way you can help me and possibly get your question printed in the book is by going to thedrclayshow.com, which is probably where you are. If you're not, go there now and go to the Ask Dr. Clay page and fill out the form and send in your question. And if your question is one that other people are having and keeps coming up, I'm going to answer it in the book. So there you go. That's the way that I can help you and you can help me by constructing the book and building your book that's going to teach you, I won't even tell you the title just yet, but it's going to tell you how to boost your metabolism once and for all. All right, my friend, that is it for this episode of the Dr. Clay Show where we have dispelled the myth of simply calories in versus calories out. Stay tuned for the next episode where I will give you some more accurate and unbiased information. Basically, I'm just going to tell you like it is.